We are currently seven weeks out from the Youngstown Half Marathon. Now today is Monday, which is Labor Day, and my plan said I was supposed to run 13 miles today. I didn't run 13 miles today because I just didn't feel like I had enough electrolytes in me and food and carbs and all that stuff. I learned something new here. It's a, uh, a new technique that I learned, okay? Three, two, one. Ah! All right, here's the deal. With everything going on on the weekend and having to recover from like doing camera stuff for 14, 15 hours this weekend uh, and all the driving and stuff. So the plan is we're gonna do five miles today just at an easy heart rate. And then tomorrow we'll tack on a couple of miles to the warm up or the cool down for the quality session. That brings us to another reason why we're not gonna run the 13 miles. I didn't have any G1M Sport or electrolytes, so I didn't want to try to force myself to do 13 miles without any sort of nutrition plan. And right now I don't have like goose or anything yet. So we're not gonna do that, but that brings me to my next point. Look what just arrived. Ah! Whoa, learned all kinds of stuff now. Anyway, we got our G1M Sport here and we're gonna be ready for the weekend and ready for this five mile run. So let me show you what else I got in the mail. So in this box right here, I believe are the uh, five pack of inner tubes that I bought from my bike because uh, a couple days ago, I wanted to take a ride on my bike and uh, both tires were flat. So that sucks. I bought new inner tubes and then I believe in this bag thing are my two brand new tires. Alright, that was a total mileage of 6.2 or 6.02 miles, a time of 53 minutes 20 seconds, pace of 8.52 per mile, 613 calories, average heart rate was 152 beats per minute with a max of 170 beats per minute, total effort of 3.4 which means it's like moderately aerobic, and then a cadence of 182 steps per minute. Now, before we go see what's inside those packages, let me show you this really cool app that I just got. I just gotta grab my, my phone here and uh, let's open it up. Okay, so let's scroll through here and we just gotta hit the button here. It's directions say hold your hand out. Okay, so let's try this, alright? No, well, I don't want that, but that looks pretty good. Uh, nah. No. Nah. No, that's my running water ball. What the hell? These are my boxers. This thing must be on, like, the freaking beta version or something. Let me... Let's try one more time. Nothing happened. Try again. Huh. Finally. All right. This thing's pretty cool. Let's uh. It is morning. Actually, it's 11.19. A little later than I wanted to start. But with that being said, we're at the track for a quality session of the week. This is week two. So what the workout calls for is a 1.5 mile warm up, three by 800 meters at 170 beats per minute, three by 400 meters at 180 beats per minute heart rate, four by 200 meters at 185 beats per minute heart rate, 
and then four by 100 meter sprints all out. Forgot to mention that this morning I did some mobility and rolling and stretching, uh, on my, especially on my left side because my left side is prone to getting really tight and I just want to make sure that I keep up on that so that it doesn't get really tight like last time when I tried to ramp up for marathon training. Another thing is yesterday I got pretty burnt on my back. I don't know if you can see it on my back, my shoulders, and not pretty burnt, but like I got burnt because I didn't put on sunscreen. So I decided I would be an adult today and actually put on sunscreen. So with that said, now let's get into the workout. Two miles, here we go. I hope you guys liked that little edit there because that was a lot of running back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. If I was smart, I would have thought of that edit a little bit earlier and just every time I come, came around this curve right here, I would have just split into the next lane. But I caught it like at the end of mile one, so I just did basically all of mile two back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So we're going to rest for about five minutes, do a little bit of stretching, and get into the main workout of this session. Now that we have the warm-up complete, we're going to go into the main set. And the first thing we're going to do is three times 800 meters at 170 beats per minute. So the first iteration is complete. Current time is 12.05. We're gonna take about a two minute break and then start with the three sets of 400 meters at 175 beats per minute. One thing I can tell you real quick after just those three is that keeping your heart rate within five beats per minute, especially with this band that's like five years old or something, um, it's kind of hard. So we'll start with those three laps of 400 meters here in about a minute uh, every time I'm going around or every like iteration I'm doing the reverse so I started out going the regular way and then I turned around and started going reverse just because I don't want to keep on pounding on my left side especially because uh, for a while when I was warming up my uh, left IT band was hurting a little bit but then uh, after the second lap of the first iteration of 800 um, just out of nowhere, it just felt okay. So, just gonna watch that and then, uh, got about 15 seconds, so let's go. Uh, i tell you what, those 400s seem like they should be easier than the 800s, but they're not, they're just not. They train a completely different muscle group. Well, not, not completely a different muscle group, but like different muscle fibers. And I'm just not used to running that fast anymore. This last one, I think I got down to a, like a five, a 5.55 uh, minute mile pace. I can't imagine myself doing that for four laps. A lot, lot faster than 640 or 650, I can tell you that, which is the pace I need to run for qualifying for Boston Marathon. But the 800s, I ran at like a, I think it averaged out to be like a 650. And those were, those were pretty tough. These workouts are doing just that. They're training not only your slow twitch fibers, but as you get to the, the shorter distance things, you have to train your fast twitch fibers, which I already do when I'm lifting legs, but in terms of running, I have to train them to be able to be able to fire for long periods of time, like the slow twitch muscle fibers do, because as your pace gets faster, 
yet to be able to recruit fast twitch fibers in your legs. Those 200s weren't any easier. Oh gosh. So the 200s and the 100s, I probably won't be able to uh, track the heart rate. It's because by the time the watch reads it, by the time my heart ramps up to the heart rate, I'm basically already done. So uh, heart rate for that might just go out the window. I might just have to do it by fuel. With the 200s, the second and the third time that I did those, um, I started out at a fast pace and then tried to, after 100 meters, I tried to, or the end of the straightaway, which is 100 meters, I tried to um, just keep increasing my pace all the way through until I hit the arrows over here. So that being said, uh, four 100 sprints are next, but the thing I wanted to talk about, point number two, is that you are training your fast switch muscles uh, with track sessions like this and like <clears throat> tempo runs that are faster than your training pace. You're training your cardiovascular system, so you're forcing your body to become more efficient at taking in air and using it uh, in the cells to be able to produce energy. But basically, you're getting better. It sucks, but you're getting better. So if you want to get better at running longer distances, get better at running the shorter distances. <laughs>
uh, unclamp the tire and then what you'll do is you'll just lift up and then you'll take the rear derailleur and pull it back a little bit and kind of have to um, oh you have to undo the uh, brake caliper here it's a little lever undo it so that it releases a little bit of tension so you can pop the wheel out and you'll have to just kind of fiddle with it a little bit and then of course you have to get kind of dirty here and lift the chain off of the rear uh, rear cassette and obviously I haven't done this in a while so I'm having a little bit of trouble there we go back tires off tire number one is off let's get the front tire off we're just gonna do the same thing undo the the lever twist it a little bit and then undo the brake caliper and this one just lifts right off so welcome to how to change a bike tube and tire now I just thought of this as I went down to go get the bike pump because we're gonna need that too I forgot to shift the rear cassette all the way down to the smallest uh, gear on the cassette. That's why I had such a hard time um, getting the chain off and it's probably going to need retuned anyway because it's been so long since I've ridden it. First thing we're going to do is undo the valve cover and we really don't need it because we have another one with each tube. We're going to, uh, because it's deflated all the way, we're just going to work this a little bit so that the bead pops. Push this valve all the way out. Just kind of make a circle all the way around to get the tire off the one side of the, of the rim. And then you can kind of just flip it off the other side. And once you do that, pop the whole thing off, get the valve out, throw this to the side because we don't need any more, it's old. And then an important thing, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to check the rim tape. Check the inside of the rim, check the rim tape to make sure there's no like uh, pieces of metal or anything, uh, any debris that can get inside your new tube and poke a hole in it. At this point, before I put it back on the bike, I probably should go through and wash the cassette because as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty dirty. You really shouldn't have buildup like this on your uh, on your drivetrain gear. That just means it's it's getting dirty. There's dirt and debris sticking to the oil and the grease that's on the chain. So you really want to keep up with that if you're going to be riding a whole bunch. So now let's put the new tube on the tire. So this is what a tube looks like without any um, air inside of it. So once it's blown up, the, uh, the stem is gonna stick out that far. And there's different size stems that you can get based on the different size uh, rims that you have. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a little bit of air and pump it into the actual inner tube so that it has a little bit of a shape. So there's this little nut on the inner tube that you have to screw off. And this is what keeps the uh, inner tube on focus. This is what keeps the inner tube uh, stuck to the rim. That's looking pretty good. We might just let out a little bit of air. There's my new tire. There you go. Make sure you find the uh, little thing. I don't know if you can see it. It says rotation that way. So we need to make sure that the, uh, the tire's on the right side. Let me orient myself to the bike here. Set the rim inside the tire. Find the hole right here. Just kind of shove the tube into the tire here. Making sure not to pinch it. So I might need to let a little bit of air out. One tip for this is to put baby powder on the inside of the tire so that it, uh, it the rubber moves easily against the other piece of rubber from the inner tube. We got the tube inside the tire and now comes the process of getting the bead all the way around and what I like to do is I like to put one of these tire levers underneath the tube so that I don't smush the tube in between the bead. 
I'll just work the bead on one side and then we'll carefully work the bead on the other side, trying not to pinch it into the rim underneath the tire bead. Ah, God, knew that would happen. Probably just scratched my nose off. All right, we got one side in. Now we gotta get the other side in. This is the tricky part. Here we wanna start with the stem side. Just make sure we don't get the inner tube locked between the bead and the, oh, golly, and the rim. That's the art here. All right, after way too long, we can now put some air into the tube and check and see if we have any leaks. But before we do that, we're just gonna go around and kind of massage everything, make sure the beads are worked in, make sure nothing is caught underneath the bead of the tire. That right there is a tire. Let's do the other tire and uh, then we'll pump the bike up. Yeah, battle scars, but it's uh, it's part of the process. So now that we got those on, slap these puppies on the bike and give it a test ride. All right, front wheel's on and time to put on the back wheel. So I remembered before I put this back on, I put the uh, shifter all the way down on the smallest cassette so I don't have to fight it. Does it work? No, it doesn't. Wait, hold on. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how you replace the tubes and tires on a race bike. We're gonna go try this out after a year and a half of not using it or even longer. Let's, uh, let's see how she handles. Well, not until we put our helmet on, of course. That's gonna be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Got some uh, exciting things coming here. This bike definitely needs some maintenance, but uh, we're back in business, baby.